So here is an Arduino blinking an LED. This is probably the first code that most people will download into their boards to see if it's actually working. Um, believe it or not, there's quite a bit going on here in order to get that LED to flash on and off. But let's look inside the microcontroller, which is this guy here, and what actually does it do to make this LED flash on and off? So if we look inside a microcontroller, I'll just put in a very simple one here that has only one IO pin. Here's the power and the ground pins, 5 volts and ground. And what you have inside the microcontroller is the I.O. pin is connected to two switches. One switch goes to 5 volts, one switch goes to ground. And these switches are controlled by the logic inside the microcontroller, um, which decodes the software that you write for it. And it ensures that only one switch is on at a time. Either this one is on and that one's off, or that one's on and this one's off. Imagine if both of those switches turned on at the same time, you'd have a dead short across the 5 volts to ground. Now, to uh, control this I.O. pin, if you want to make it go high or to 5 volts, you, well, you'd write code, but what happens inside the microcontroller is this switch turns on and it connects the I.O. pin to 5 volts. If you want it to go low, um, this switch down here will be turned on and it'll be connected to ground. The instructions for doing that, well first of all to set up an I.O. pin to be an output you'd use the pin mode instruction with the pin number, in this case I chose 13 which happens to be that pin that that LED is hooked up to and then the word output and that makes this I.O. pin an output and what it does is it turns on one or the other of these two transistors. If you want to make it an input, you just change this word here to input. And what it does is it turns both these transistors off. And then this pin is in a state they call floating. And it can be driven up or down by uh, something out here, an external device. But in this case, we're going to talk about using an I.O. pin as an output. The uh, Arduino code for making it go high is the, word, or the, uh, the function or the, the code digital write pin number again and what you want it to do. In this case go high or you could change this to low. That is how you control the I.O. pin. Now this is a piece of electronics in here. These switches aren't mechanical switches that have um, low valley of resistance and the ability to handle several amps of current. They are little tiny transistors and they have limitations. And what are those limitations? Well first of all there's only a, so much current that you can pass through either one of these switches. Um, if we want to pass current out of the I.O. pin this direction, we turn the upper switch on, that's called sourcing current. And if we want to bring current into the I.O. pin through to ground, we close this switch and that's called sinking current. And if you were to dig out the spec sheet for the microcontroller on the Arduino, um, it's the AT Mega devices. Uh, and you dug through the the, uh, the data sheet, which is actually more like a book. It's some 200 or 300 pages long, but it tells you everything you need to know about the microcontroller and everything that it can do. But what we're primarily interested in is, is a table near the beginning called the absolute maximum ratings. And what that tells you is the actual the absolute maximum amount of current that this I/O pin can sink or source, and it's given as 40 milliamps, which uh, seems like a lot of current but you can run out of it pretty quick depending on what you're doing. More on that later. If you were to even run it at 40 milliamps you would have a good chance of destroying the chip, the microcontroller. Um, you want to run it at something a lot less than that. 20 milliamps max is probably pretty good. Another problem with running it at higher current it's like having another resistor in here and as more current flows through the resistance of the switch the greater the voltage across that switch and so less voltage appears at the output here. Um, and the reason why the switch would fail is that it gets hot because you've got power dissipated in that resistor. So how do we interface or hook up something to this pin and actually do something with that pin? Well stay tuned. Uh, there's more videos coming. Hope you enjoyed watching this one and watch uh, some of my other ones coming up. See you later.